The Virtual Boy was cancelled in 1996, but it lives on through some devoted fans, most of them gathering at the site Planet Virtual Boy. Since 2000 it has brought us red gamers together, and it's also fostered a homebrew development community. The number of homebrew games almost outnumber the official releases, and although that's not the hardest thing to accomplish perhaps, it's still very impressive for such an obscure and long dead console. I've got my hands on 19 of them, and I'm going to go through them all, reviewing them and also suggesting on how they could be improved. Disclaimer. Making games is hard. I don't claim to know anything about development or coding, so please keep in mind that my opinions are purely those of a gamer. Coding for a closed system like the Virtual Boy is an achievement in itself, but I'm still going to complain a little here and there. Take it as constructive criticism from Protoman, your friendly neighborhood nerd. First out, there's the two most complete homebrew games made by Planet Virtual Boy creator and keeper upper Christian Radke, or Chrisse. Blocks is a puzzle game very similar to Boxel on the Game Boy. You can push blocks but not pull blocks onto spots and when you've placed them all you win and go to the next stage. I'm not good at these kind of games though, so I didn't get very far. The only complaint about blocks is the lack of music. Blocks 2 fixes that and adds even more. This is definitely the most complete homebrew game. If this was released in the Virtual Boy's life cycle, it could have been sold in stores, no question. The graphics are good. The title screen, the moving background, the transparent overlays, it all looks good. There is, for lack of a better expression, a shit ton of levels. They range from simple to really huge and advanced. What kind of IQ must Christian have to come up with these? The game has passwords, like its predecessor, and you can retry a stage once you've failed it, and if you're like me, you'll fail a lot. It even counts the number of steps you've taken. The only nitpick I can think of is that I prefer the well done graphic from the first game over the sequel's way of handling it. But that's a tiny thing. Only one question remains. Why is Christian not making any more Virtual Boy games? He's obviously skilled. What if you put that to making, say, a side scroller? That would be rad. Kay. Next up we have Capitan Sevilla 2 by Ruben Gar. I have no idea if there is a Capitan Sevilla 1. This is a side-scroller in progress, but as of now it's unplayable. You can walk, duck and try to jump. Sometimes holding the A button does a moon jump, sometimes not. The moody controls made it really hard to make any progress, but as I said this is still early in development. What I can say though is that this game has great graphics. It's some of the best this side of Warrior Land. I am not kidding. My suggestions would be, besides fixing the jump, add an attack. Either punching or a gun, being able to attack would make it more fun. Or maybe El Capitan is a pacifist, I don't know. Anyway, this game has great potential. Castle of Doom by Virtual Chris The game has a story unlike most homebrew games. A guy named Bob was going to visit a king at his castle, but the king wasn't at home and he accidentally got locked in the castle and must find his way out. Through an empty castle with bats flying around. This game has an Atari 2600 vibe to it, and I think it's a good thing. You walk and jump to get to the goal and then you move on to the next stage. You can moon jump by holding down the button, and if you hit a wall you lose your momentum. I think this mechanic works quite well, and the game is fun to play. I guess what I would suggest here is just improving the graphics. Maybe make the jump a bit faster and more fluid. Overall, I like this game. Game Hero by It's a Guitar Hero-like music game. You have to press buttons and button combination to keep going. Not at all in time with the music, but that's not that important to me anyway. I played an earlier version before and suggested then that he should make the buttons light up when you press them, which he added, and it's much better now. The song selection is surprisingly rich, and focusing on video game music is a great idea. I still think though that the music quality could use some work. The tunes sound like they're coming from the old PC speaker, but at least the game has music, right? And it does sound like their counterparts, just not with the same quality. Music seems to be a hard thing to do with Virtual Boy Homebrew. Nobody has gotten it right yet. Even now though, this is a good game, and it can only get better with time. Also, a bonus point for the Half-Naked Peach. 
Virtual Chris is the homebrew developer with the most output, and next up is GoSub and GoSub 3D. In GoSub you guide a submarine through a maze. The graphics on the title screen and the submarine is quite good, and the game itself has plenty of levels. The problem is, it's very slow. And of course, touching the wall sends you back to the beginning. GoSub 3D adds the ability to change between two planes and go behind obstacles. You can also shoot torpedoes at... whatever this is. GoSub 3D is still in development, and my suggestions would be to speed it up. I think the sub moves too slow, and firing the torpedoes with the right D-pad is odd. Better use the B button, in my opinion. Hunter by Dan B is more or less an attempted port of an old Amiga game. The first game to have a free-roaming 3D overworld, I believe. Having this on the Virtual Boy is no small technical feat, but as a game, there's little reason to play it. All you can do is glide around, place bombs that can't blow anything up, and get in a car and drive around. I'm not sure that even if it was a 100% recreation of the original Hunter game, that it would be that fun to play. But as a tech demo, it's very impressive. Insecticide, the game formerly known as Insect Combat, is a 2D fighting game in the works by Virtual Chris. The game already has some nice graphics. I was pleasantly surprised to see that it had backgrounds. I honestly expected black. The character select screen is broken, but I see what he's going for. The game itself, it's not playable really, but it has potential. On this version I could only duck and on rare occasions jump. Slowly. The game would need to pick up some serious speed, not to mention controls, to be fun, but it had potential. And I hope it gets finished. Mario Kart Virtual Cup. The only Virtual Boy homebrew game that has voice synthesis, which I commend it for. But I also have to complain that it sounds terrible. Anyway, this game is a marvel. It plays almost exactly like Super Mario Kart, but without the annoying permanent split screen. Nintendo could have made this themselves, and it's amazing that a homebrewer did this. Unfortunately it's not finished, and it doesn't look like it will be either. You can choose any driver, but can only drive time trials, not with opponents. There's no items either, and the music sounds a little off, but as we know, music is hard to pull off. If this game was finished, it would immediately place in the top 10 overall Virtual Boy games, no doubt. This Pac-Man demo by someone resembles Pac-Man for Atari 2600 a little, but this doesn't work. All you can do is eat pellets, but the ghosts can't hurt you and you can't eat them. Those three pellets down there I have no idea how to get to. Pong Invaders by Ush is odd. It looks like it's a mix between Space Invaders and Breakout, which could be fun, but pressing every button I can't shoot or make a ball to bounce around. I tried bouncing the shots, but of course that didn't work. Right now, unless I'm missing something, this is not very good, but it could be. Virtual Boy Racing by Martin Kwiasinski. This resembles OutRun a fair bit. There's no goal or objectives though, you just drive. The other driver seems bent on getting in your way. What's their deal? Sunday drivers. So there's no lasting motivation to play this game as of now, but I will say that the graphics are very nice. The cars are big and detailed, and although there's not much in the way of animation, the road, however, steals the show. It animates super fluidly, and goes up and down in hills and it's just beautiful to look at. It looks as good as Road Rash. And the game is more fun to play than Road Racer for me, since you don't run out of gas so damn quick. My suggestion would be to have two modes, one for racing against time and one for combat. The concept from the NES game Knight Rider was nice. Shooting at enemy cars that try to kill you. But please skip the gas as a time limit, or at least make it a little lenient. A Simon Says game for Virtual Boy? How exciting can this be? I dare say this is the best game ever. Tron by Alberto Covarrubias has some great graphics. I don't remember seeing scaling and rotating very often in real Virtual Boy games. After the very impressive intro and the title screen, playing the game is very simple. It's based on the light cycle part of the arcade game from 1982. You drive around and try to trap the opponent. Whoever runs into the trail or the wall first loses. I found winning this easier said than done when I played it. I don't know what to suggest but when it comes to this game. It can't really have levels. Multiplayer would be cool but... Short but sweet, this game is good. 
Mario Virtual Boy, or Super Mario as the title screen says, is a Mario platformer. The best kind of platformer. This seems to be a recreation of the Mario Land game Nintendo were working on before they cancelled it for Mario Clash. Like Wario Land, you can hop between different planes, but here you can do it anytime you want, for better or worse. On my first tries I could jump on the turtle and up to this platform, but then I couldn't get it to work. Pressing up then jump would work, I thought, but it just had Mario jumping to his death. I don't know if this mechanic was what Nintendo intended, but if it was, it could have made for a somewhat annoying game. I don't know if it would be possible to continue developing this title, but if it was, it could be great. It's Mario, after all. Soviet Union 2010 is a 2D shooter by Slovenian Matej Horvat. You play as communists against American capitalists. In Soviet Russia, planes shoot you! You can select story mode or endless mode. The difference seems to be that endless mode is harder, with planes coming up from the bottom of the screen to surprise you. The game plays like any shmup, except for the odd thing that you have ammo. With special weapons that makes sense, but for the initial gun it seems odd to have ammo for it. It should be infinite. The moving stars background is very cliché, but it's, it's fine. The plane designs are a little lacking in imagination, I think, but I like the satellites. There's no music, but there are sound effects, and they sound good. Another good thing is that you can select between three difficulties. The way you select between them is different. You press left for easy, up for medium, and right for hard. I was expecting just to cycle between the settings with left and right, but oh well. This game is solid, it works, and it's one of the most complete homebrew games. It does play a bit slow though. In Soviet Union 2011 many things are improved. The speed of the gameplay is increased, the ship designs look like actual planes now, and you can pick up new weapons like rapid fire. The space background has been substituted for ground, with roads and cows? Cats? Something. What hasn't been changed though is that you still have to collect ammo for the initial gun. Another complaint I guess would be the hit detection. You can die from having a plane touch the vicinity of your plane, as if the plane is a box. Lastly, the title is a little odd. By numbering the games this way, it makes it seem like it's a sports game. I thought at first that it was the 2011 version of the game Soviet Union, when in fact it's a sequel. That doesn't affect the game though. And the game is impressive, an improvement from the last game, and that was a solid one already. Shmups are not my kind of genre personally, but this should appeal to any shmup fan out there. VUE Snake is the third game by Christian Radke. Snake began in 1978 as Surround on the Atari 2600, but was, for me anyway, made popular on mobile phones in the late 90s. Anyhow, this is another complete game from our German Meister. It's got just as good of a presentation level as Blocks. It's got three modes, Normal, Marathon and Double. Normal is normal, Marathon is like normal but you have three lives, and in double mode you can actually control two snakes, one with each d-pad. That's the best mode. Another thing that's good is that the game is played on a kind of grid so you can easily see where you and the dot is. So it's easier to play than the other versions where it's just black background. I've only played maybe three versions of Snake, but I'll still say that this is the best version. The Virtual Boy is a really obscure and old console. That people are successfully making games for it now is quite impressive, even if they aren't all complete. For the future, I just wish more games are completed, but other than that, I think Clamp Virtual Boy developers should cooperate on a game. Just think about it. If Chrissy, with his skills, could combine with the graphic making prowess of Rubengar and Virtual Ben, or with the programming skills of Dan B and Dog P and the others, I would suggest a joint project. It could be awesome. Anyhow, let's have a round of applause for the Virtual Boy homebrew developers.